that there's a lot of people going through hard times. But we need to reach out a hand and hold them and let them know that they're being heard. After 11 years, I am finally being heard and it's liberating. Thank you all. Michelle Knight made her voice heard when she got the opportunity to address Ariel Castro, the man who held her and two other young women captive for more than a decade in his Cleveland home. Knight endured 11 years of unimaginable abuse at Castro's hands. Before he was captured last May, he committed suicide four months later. Knight, however, is continuing to speak out most recently through a brand new book, Finding Me is her story of what took place, how she survived, and why she says she's a victor, not a victim. We welcome her into our studio this morning. Michelle, thanks for joining us to talk about this. A lot of people are looking at you and everything that you've been through and saying, how did you get the courage to even write a book about it when you're still going through the motions of, of healing? It's um, technically is a healing process. And writing a book is like a, a message to everybody in the world that they, they can make it to through any obstacles, any pain. Was it tough at some points? Because you recount in your book the abuse, what happened, how you felt, and what he did to you. Oh, it was very difficult. It was a, it's a roller of emotions, but, you know, you intend to put it behind you because you intend to forgive the person slowly but surely. How can you forgive him? Because I will want somebody to forgive me for all the bad things that I've done in life. And trust me, there were a lot of bad things. Uh, not like him. <laughs> you know, even, you had a even, normal... Even though it may have been small things, uh -huh. I would still want somebody to forgive me because it doesn't make him any less than a human. Take me back to the day, since it's been a year to your release, the day you found freedom, the day you got out. Tell me what happened. Oh, it was an amazing experience, but it was also traumatic at the same time because I thought that we were being broken into. I didn't even really think that we were going home. So Amanda got out first, and then you and Gina, you were hiding. Yeah, we were hiding. How come? <laughs> because we thought that it was a burglar instead of um, cops. Mm -hmm. And so we, we heard police, but even though, you know, you don't think it, you think, you know, anybody can say police. Anybody can say there's a cop in the house. And you don't really think at the moment, oh, this is really a cop when you hear that much noise and that much it, without screaming. When you don't hear a lot of things and you, all you hear is noise, you kind of tend to think that this is what it is. It's a, it's a, you know, attack on the house. That moment came for you, and after 11 years, it, did you ever think, did, or I guess at some point when you were held, being held captive, did you think that you would ever get out? There was a point in time where I thought I would never get out, but I always had hope that maybe one day somebody would come, stumble across us, um, find us. You were out um, and in a store looking for directions so that you could go for a visitation appointment with your son. You asked for directions how to get there. Ariel Castro said he knew how to get there. He'd take you. Yeah. You accepted the ride. Did you, you had a funny feeling even when you were in the car about him. I had a small feeling, but I didn't. It wasn't like really huge. Mm. It didn't get to the point where my alarm went off like beep 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 get out. Um, it didn't start coming to me until I got like closer to the house um, when he locked the gate. And then I got into the house. That's when it got more stronger. And that's when I said I should have listened to my gut feeling because at that point in time, after I got up the stairs, it was over. And you knew that. He locked the door. How long was it before you were in captivity? He had you in the house and the abuse began. Um, not that long. Uh, the very next day, it started really horrible. Uh, the first day was just him tying me up. Um, him dragging me down to the, you know, basement a couple times, you know, things like that. So he beat you, he abused you, he raped you, and he had in the beginning, I guess, a helmet on your head? Yeah, it's to stop me from screaming, and the chain pressed into my voice box to where I couldn't talk. 
How did you survive even one attack, let alone 11 years? What kept you going? My son. My son kept me going. The love of my son and knowing that one day I'll be back with him kept me going for the longest time. He was pretty young when you were yes. taken. What was he, two or three years of age? He was two and a half. Yeah. And you would have conversations with him just to keep your sanity? Yeah. You also got pregnant. Yes. A number of times over the years. And you, because you had been pregnant before, since you'd been, you knew what yeah, was going I, well, on. Yeah, I knew. And it was like, once I figured it out, I was like, oh, crap, this is going to happen and it's not going to be good. And when he found out you were pregnant, he, he forced you to end the pregnancy? Yes. And, and in different ways? M multiple ways, yes. What would he do? He would kick me, he would punch me, he'll jump on my stomach, he'll knock me downstairs. He would literally take a barbell and hit me right in the stomach. And you never got any treatment? No. And he didn't even let you, I guess, wash or clean up for the first several months? No. And then when did you realize that he had taken someone else captive in the house? Um, it was shortly after I got finally got my TV back because he t had took my TV to give it to them so they could watch TV. So I finally got it back and that's when I realized that there was somebody else in the house. And you knew that they were being abused? Yes. And I knew exactly what they were going through and I felt so horrible that I couldn't do nothing about it. So there were times when you might have been able to get out but you didn't because he would stop you or you were afraid he would stop you because he used to play these games with you? Oh, he used to play tremendous dumb games. Like he'll leave the door unlocked and he'll sit there and say, well, if you try, I'll hang you upside down. Or if you try, he'll threaten me with somebody else in the house. And I, and I don't like people getting hurt, so I intend not to do things that would get somebody else hurt. So uh, you were worried that if you ran and found freedom, that he would hurt the others, and that was yes. one of the reasons why you stayed? Yeah. Did you talk about it with the others? Not really. I, I try not to talk about it with the others because I didn't know how, you know, they would react to it. Mm -hmm. But there was one time I talked to Gina about escaping, but it fell through. We never made it out. <laughs> Did you think, though, and I guess you must have wondered why somebody didn't know that you and there were others in the house. Because at one point in the book you talk about being I, I raped. Que I question it all the time because a lot of people don't see the signs. They don't see the locked doors. They don't see the windows sealed shut. They see people going in, but they never see people going out. It's kind of confusing, especially with the cops and with the people that said that they see me in the backyard. And I'm just wondering why, why didn't you come back? Why didn't you sit there and say, you know, I need to do this because this girl or this person might be hurt? Because at one point he had his son and even his grandson came up and saw you. Yes. So there were people that knew that you were in the house yes. at that time and not, and not always kept in the house. because And just, and just like the neighbors, like they see me outside. It's, outside. It's very confusing that they didn't see the signs. Is is not that hard to see, but I understand they see people every day, you know, looking totally mm. ridiculous walking mm -hmm. outside. So I understand, you know, that the, it wasn't their fault. They didn't mean for, you know, this stuff to happen. It's just right now they need to take the time and look at the signs that they've seen now and you know, put that out there, mm -hmm. that we've seen signs and tell people how they've seen signs and, you know, let them know that if they see signs like that, even though you look stupid, call the cops. Call the cops. You might be saving more than one girl. Yeah. And that's more part of the reason why you speak out today. Yes. You think about that. You think about the others. After everything you've been through, you think about other people. Yes. And I know exactly how those girls felt when they were kidnapped in a group. It's, it's painful. It's horrible. And I pray to God that they have family looking for them. Because mm -hmm. yours didn't. Mine didn't. 
I know you don't have much of a relationship with them now, but do you, would you want them to read your book? Yeah, I will want them to read my book. Yeah. I will want them to understand that I'm not trying to hurt them by what I say. I want to help people understand that people make mistakes. People make tremendous mistakes. No matter how big or small they are, they make mistakes. And the key is to learn from them, not to feel hurt by them, not to feel saddened by them. It's just to help. Because if you can help one mother be a better mother, I'd rather do that than to see another child suffer at the hands of abuse, regardless of what type of abuse it is. You're incredibly selfless because you don't have, your son was adopted um, by another family and yes. you've chosen to let him stay with them. You're not going to fight anything because you don't want to confuse him and you don't want him to leave the only parents he's ever known. Yeah. It must be incredibly difficult day after day though. Yeah, it's very difficult, especially since Mother's Day came up and I all oh, I thought about was him yeah but I know he's in a good place and I'm very proud of him and I love him so much and one day he'll reach out to me and when he does I'm there with open arms no matter what decision he makes you've shown such incredible courage for so many people and you continue to spread that word and yes. try to give others a voice it's it's extraordinarily inspirational thank you so much for sharing with you're us. very welcome